draft game. <laughs> I'm not gonna spend three months making a full fan game because of one comment. I mean, that's so. Or you can do that. Can you make FNAF How one about 2D? FNAF one and 2D? This is so cool. <laughs> Five Nights at Freddy's is one of the greatest horror games of all time, and in case you've been living under a rock, it's about a security guard defending against evil animatronics at Freddy Fazbear's Pizza. <coughs> Freddy Fazbear's Pizza. I've been a fan of FNAF ever since I was a kid, and with this movie finally coming to theaters, along with requests to make a FNAF game, I thought, hey, why don't I spend over 60 hours over the course of a week and lose all my sanity remaking FNAF? And like my other games, we're gonna do it in my style. 2D. Let's do some planning. Every good journey starts with a square that eventually gets stretched out and turned into a floor and ceiling. This is where we can implement our first mechanic into the game, movement. What's neat about Five Nights at Freddy's is that its gameplay is similar to a PowerPoint. You just click a bunch of buttons. This makes it really easy to port to 2D since clicking buttons can work well on either dimension. So to challenge myself more and fit the 2D style better, we're gonna add platformer-like movement to the game to make it a little more different to 3D. Of course, we need a player to actually move. So I decided I'm just gonna use my player from Backrooms 2D. Oh, you, you don't know what Backrooms 2D is. It's just a little game I'm working on. Currently the zero most wishlisted game on Steam because it's not even on Steam because frick you. Anyways, I imported my player sprite, coded up some player movement, and attempt number one. He's moving very slowly. Whoa, whoa, bro, he's moonwalking. Maybe I should do a little more research. Anyways, our player actually moved around our office, which is a W. So after renovating our office with a few textures, I started my first big feature, the doors. As you can tell by the placement art, the doors are gonna work like the ones you can see in FNAF 1. Stop Bonnie and Chica before they get in. So I added the buttons, made an animation, and coded its functionality. First try, baby, let's go. It turns out you can actually get crushed by the door, so I added a collider to not make that happen. And that takes us to the other part of the door, the lights. Now, lights in FNAF 1 work by revealing whoever's on the other side. To recreate this, I realized that we can use a peeking mechanic to temporarily expand our visibility. So I did some research. Oh. And it works, except it'll probably give me a migraine if I don't smooth it out. <laughs> Arguably, the most important mechanic in FNAF is the monitor, which is how you see where the animatronics are. In the original, you swipe your mouse down to bring the monitor up. And while I could imitate that, I don't feel like that would use the 2D twist we gave to the game. So instead, I created a table, made a TV monitor, and made the sleek transition to focus on the screen. Now you can't have a monitor without a map that defines your cameras. So after looking at some reference images, I drew up a camera map, imported it into the game, made a sprite for the cameras, and you can start to see it come together. To test if my cameras actually work, I made different colored backgrounds to serve as placeholders, and made functionality to switch between each background. Yes! Yes! <laughs> With my newfound success, I added more cameras to my camera map and coded a better system which completely broke my entire freaking project and added this green highlight which matches the original game. Here it is in action. Now we have our player running around our office with working monitors and doors. But I, I, I feel like it's missing something. I just can't put my finger on it. <laughs> Did I get you? Coding our animatronics means coding their AI, which can be broken down into a few parts. The first part we need to focus on is how they behave on the cameras, which goes something like this. Approximately every four or five seconds, the animatronics are allowed to do a movement opportunity. The game will pick a random number between one and 20. That number is then compared to the animatronics current AI level. If the level meets or exceeds the random number, then the animatronic will move. To make this easier to code, I added these placeholder icons so I can see the animatronic's position on the map. Nonetheless, this still took me a while, especially since I'm not that good at GPScript. But eventually, yes. Oh, baby, he's moving. He's a shmovin! The next segment of AI we need is when an animatronic is outside your door. In FNAF 1, a preview of said animatronic can be visible when you turn on your light. So I made Bonnie appear when she's right outside your door. And I know you're saying, It doesn't look like Bonnie, but if I draw some smiley face here. 
it's definitely Bonnie. In addition to this preview, if you don't close the door in time, you're gonna be met with a gruesome demise, which I'll just represent with text. Yes, jump scare. Applying this AI to Freddy is a little trickier since I want Freddy to come through both sides of your office rather than just one, causing me to add another dimension to my path array. But we got it eventually. I'm dead. Right now though, there's no way to stop Freddy from unaliving you. I could just add another door, but I wanted to borrow a well-loved mechanic from the franchise. Press the red button now to administer a controlled shot. Apparently, these things are used to electrocute the animatronics, so I drew a sprite, imported it into the game, oh. and when Freddy appears in the hall, we shock him back, looks like he went back here, but he just appeared again, we shock him back. Point is, the controlled shocks work. Yes! And what did I do to celebrate it? Add a light, because it, it felt dark in the office. This is the base game so far, and while it functions, if you squint really hard, you may notice that the animatronics are actually just squares. This realization marked the start of my 10 hour journey to bring my game to life. Art. The first thing to draw is the animatronic, so I got some reference images and used my party goer sprite as the base to work off for my game Backrooms 2D. Oh, you. You don't know what Backrooms 2D is? It's just a little game I'm working on. Currently, the zero most much just a game on Steam. <laughs> From here, I started adding the defining characteristics for each animatronic. First with their colors, and then with their details. You got the beak for Chica, the hook for Foxy, the hat for Freddy, the teeth for Bonnie. Yo! What is that? What is that? All I want for Christmas is my two front teeth. What the... Anyways, here are the animatronics and I'd say it doesn't look half bad. So I replaced my square with the animatronics, made a to-do list so it looks like I know what I'm doing, and showed the progress to my friends. I can move around. I can check my security cameras. Oh my God. Oh my God. That's crazy. <laughs> you know what this is? It's a controlled shock, right? Like in the games, right? It's like the game that's actually crazy. So with my newfound confidence, no, no. I started work on the most ambitious part of this project yet. On my camera map, I have eight different cameras I need to draw scenes for. The first of which being the show stage. The show stage is where the animatronics give their performance, where fantasy and fun come to life. So I started with placing all the animatronics on this gray base, adding a checkerboard pattern in the background to really sell that pizzeria vibe. After adding a wooden platform to emphasize their animatronics, I filled my background, added some clouds, and extruded my checkerboard to give it a pseudo 3D kind of look. And after some final touches, I'm exhilarated to say, I'm done. Any more to go. Exhilarated! Seriously though, I think this looks dope. Please let me out. I've been editing this video for five weeks now, please! I started with a lamp, cause that looks cool. And after adding a cabinet and doorway, decided that I need to fill this empty space with famous memorabilia from the franchise. And what better place to start than good old Fredbear. Oh, that is creepy. So I got my reference image and started painting a yellow blob. This isn't just any old blob though. This is a blob with shading and an ear. Hey, that actually looks kind of neat. Well, I think I'm just gonna add this purple over here. And although it took a few attempts, I think that's pretty good. Next up is everyone's favorite blue box, number one crate. Hey, uh, what's another iconic animatronic? Let's do Circus Baby. That's Circus Baby, and then we'll do the puppet. Hey, that looks pretty good. We got our supply closet. Next, I think I'm gonna do the hall, which just involves making a black box, copying my checkerboard, shading, and that's the hall done. Next are the party rooms where I reuse my table sprite from my game Backrooms 2D and- Oh, you- You don't know what Backrooms 2D is? It's just a little game, dip, 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 dip. <laughs> Add a poster and Juju approves. Ooh, that's clean, bro. What? Pirate Cove was a little trickier as I had to make different states of the curtains that Foxy could peek out of. I'm very happy with how this one turned out though, as I really think I nailed the atmosphere with the props I placed. Which leads to the hall, where I added boxes, posters, and easter eggs like the crying child which built a ton of atmosphere. After adding a checkerboard pattern to my floor and the subtle vignette, I imported it into my game. I'm excited to actually try this out bro. 3, 2, 1. Uh -huh. That's so sick. But if you look closely, our animatronics don't actually appear on the cameras. So I added sprites that I can toggle off and on to each of my cameras. Da -da 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 -da. And off the bat. Oh, Foxy. Oh, he's popping off. Shoo! 
This might actually work, dude! But then I looked a little closer. You'll notice that the animatronics aren't disappearing when they move from this camera. So when she moved from 5B to 2B, she's not disappearing from 5B. Okay, a minor setback, but that should be a quick fit. What is the bug? I don't understand! How is it? No! Please. Yes! 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 I used this function when I should have used this function. Dude, bro. that literally took me like 40 minutes to figure out. I love game development. We got freaking moving animatronics, bro. One thing I want to implement in the game is this hidden known feature called camera stalling, where if they use their movement opportunity, but you're looking at them, the movement opportunity will always fail. I think that's one really good way to incentivize cameras. Look how slow Freddy's moving now, right? It looks like he fails his movement opportunity more often. Okay, camera stalling done. We need to add the vent to the main office, right? The what? Well, when I planned how this game was gonna work, for some reason, I let Foxy attack through a vent in your office. So I made a vent sprite, put Foxy's head in it, added a button to repel Foxy, and... Yes, bro. That looks effing sick. I think the rest of the AI pretty much finished. Which means I can move on to... The UI. From our plan, we see that we have the current hour, power, and usage displayed in the ceiling, matching those found in the original game. So for each of these elements, I added text, icons, call, and... Yo! Infinite power, baby! Anyways, here's the UI in action. Nice. Good. After adding some fun little posters to remind you how innocent Freddy Fazbear's pizza is, it was time to add some VHS filters now. In the original game, the cameras had this VHS effect to make it look real. So to replicate this, I first started off by 8-bit VHS effect. After some digging, I found out that what I needed was a shader, which are programs that are built specifically to modify graphics through dark magic. I'm pretty sure. And that's the problem. I'm not a wizard, and I have no idea how these things work. I tried getting around this by making a transparent video that overlays my camera, but Kado has pretty weak support for video, so this VHS effect is gonna have to wait. Oh sorry, did, did I scare you there? Good, because it's time to make the jump scares, which looks a little like this. The plan is to make a big sprite that I can toggle on when you die and make it shake. I don't know how to make something violently wiggle though, so... Let's just copy that, paste it into here, and... Huh, that's strange. Let me... There we go. I totally didn't break my entire game and punch my table while making this. <laughs> Gameplay balancing next. According to the spreadsheet I found, here are all the movement time for the animatronics. Which refers to how often they have a chance to move based on their AI level. Equipped with this data, I basically just copied and pasted the same movement times for my animatronics with a sprinkle of randomness mixed in. One thing that's pretty cool about the FNAF game is that for the AI level, you can actually see how it changes throughout the night. So for example, 12 a.m., 1 a.m., 2 a.m. is 6, 3 a.m. is 7, 7, 4 a.m., 5 a.m. is 8. And keep in mind the numbers are out of 20, which is the most aggressive AI. To recreate this dynamic AI system, I created this function which changes the AI based on the hour inputted, set the AI level for each hour based on this array, and that should be the balancing... almost done. Not nil! How are you nil? Okay, I saw it change. I saw it change. And with our animatronics fully balanced, I moved on to making the thing that will leave you satisfied after you complete the game. The wind scene. I started by adding the 6am text with a professional congratulations message at the bottom. Congrats, you beat FNAF 2D. I don't have enough budget to make a proper end screen. But I realized that a simple string of letters wouldn't make for a satisfying ending. At the end of the first two FNAF games, you get a paycheck to signify your triumphant survival at Freddy Fazbear's Pizza. So after googling what this paycheck looks like, I copied its bright pink color, made a paycheck of my own, my name is very easy to put on like a type space, right? added the animatronics, and okay, end screen done. Look at that, it looks beautiful. After a little more looking though, I noticed that the end screen looks static, which is something a little camera shake can't fix. Thankfully, our jump scare provided us with this wiggle script that I can simply copy and paste into our camera, and... Why are you moving left? Why? How is it this hard? Why is it not she? Stop! We got there eventually. <laughs> Wayne cutscene is done, which means we can move on to an old enemy of ours. 
Alright, VHS effects, boys. Instead of trying to find a workaround like last time, we're gonna tackle this shader and all the bugs it may bring head on. After some digging, I found this piece of code that's supposed to create a VHS effect. And after looking at a tutorial on how to use it, I found out how to create a new shader which gives me a place to paste the code I found and settle this issue once and for all. Oh my god. Yo! <laughs> yes! Uh, done. Well, after that fiasco, I need some time to make some small changes, like this transition to our wind scene. Yes! Yes! I also added this cooldown to our event so you can't accidentally waste all your power. Now all of this is great, but believe it or not, we're still missing half of the game. Because it turns out humans not only have eyes, but also ears. So for me to say that I truly finished this game, we're gonna need sounds. Hello, hello! Every bit of audio you hear in a game is played from some sort of event, whether it be a door closing, light buzzing, or man scaring. These events then play the sound effect, which we can put in a different script for cleaner code. With this in mind, making audio for our game is a two-step process, making the system for our audio to be played, and making the actual sounds. And for this first step, I know just the person to learn after. Now, we theoretically have a system that can play sound effects, but we kinda need sounds to actually test it. Thankfully, a quick Google search led me to this Reddit post containing an organized list of all the sound effects from the games! Hello, this is Markiplier, and welcome to Five Nights at Freddy's, an indie game with the in math and Eric Godsend, you slash King Alex 105X. Now that I have the sounds, I need to add a little bit of style to them to make them fit the game. And to do that, I need to convert them into an 8 bit sound effect, which I don't really know how I'm gonna do. After some digging, I found out that I needed a bit crusher, which adds a retro quality to sounds. And the website I found this in is also a sound making website where I can apply this effect. So I signed up for a new account, created a new project, and crushed my sound. Starting with... Add effects. Boom. 8-bit. Perfect. Oh, this sounds so cool. I'm actually so pumped right now. This went on for a bit as I proceeded to turn every sound effect into an 8-bit style, ending off with Hello? Hello, hello? Uh... Now that we have our sound effects in place, it was time to work on the final thing on my to-do list. Main menu. I actually started working on this a few days ago when I added a sprite and some text, which made me pretty hype. Look at that. <laughs> well, now that we have an audio system, I added our 8-bit music, added a background, and applied a VHS shader to it, which took a few tries. I settled on this shader since I like the texture this white line gives to the background. After adding a little gradient to make my text more readable, I coded a script so you can switch between scenes and moved on to this. In the original FNAF, there's these scene transitions that tell you the current night you're on, which I can simply recreate with a black background and some text. This transition is a little more complex, requiring an animation, some black bars, and... But with those little scenes out of the way, I should probably make a death screen. I started by getting a reference image from the original game. We have a picture of the supply closet with good old Freddy, who may need some glasses. Anyways, I added Freddy, removed his eyeballs, brutally mutilated him, added his game over text, and it looks pretty sweet. From the sound effects I downloaded, there's also a bunch of white lines, which I can use in an animation to create this neat transition. Our office is looking pretty empty though, so I should probably add some memorabilia. Starting with this iconic poster. I placed my animatronics, added a checkerboard and some clouds, and according to this guy, it just has like some pink to the left. I first tried replicating this by adding a pink gradient, but nah, it doesn't work. I might just take like a pink blob and add some shading and glow to it. It looks a little better, but after adding the complementary yellow blob, I changed this blending mode to lighten, and my goodness, does that look clean. Of course, we need the iconic celebrate text in front of our poster, and after adding some drop shadow to our animatronics, let's do that. So I placed my poster in the office, resized it, and... After polishing my table and monitor sprites, I of course couldn't forget about Cupcake Carl and his kind eyes. Inspired from one of my helpers, I also added my Bacteria Boy from my game Backroom 2D and... Oh, you... 
You don't know what Backrooms 2D is? I also made some paper sprites and spent way too long making these lights flicker. We, we don't talk about that. Now that we have everything set up, let's do our first official playtest of the game. Spoiler alert, it went really well. Foxy! Foxy! Oh my god! The trifecta! I was like, it's terrible! Ah! Jesus! <laughs> Anyways, I took quite a few notes on what I could improve, like this ambience being way too loud! I also added this subtle static transition when switching cameras, fixed more bugs, and worked on the power out sequence when you run out of power. Fun fact, I initially wasn't going to include this because I wanted to release this video when the movie came out and opted for the spring trap jump scare, but seeing that we're a little bit over the deadline, I don't see why not. Freddy's power out sequence can be broken into three stages, the first of which being the power going out. This involves stopping everything in the game, like the the movement of the animatronics, turning off the lights by setting my light mode to subtractive, and playing the power off sound effect with some bit crushing applied. Then comes Freddy's blinking eyes. I created a few different eye sprites to give my boy a little more variety in his blinking, and played that sweet 8-bit music. And then... I'm thrilled with how this turned out. And just in case you want to experience that jump scare a little more, we're gonna add a 2020 mode. If you don't already know, 2020 2020 mode is the hardest mode in any FNAF game, where all the animatronics AI are set to its max value. So I set the boys' AI level to 20, added some encouraging words. You dead. <laughs> Dang. And if anyone can beat this mode and send proof in my Discord server, I will literally give you a shout out in the next video because I don't even know if this thing is possible. Point proven. And before you enter the game over screen, there's a bunch of static that shows up. I initially tried to recreate this with shaders, but yeah. I don't like that. Thankfully, the sound effects I downloaded came with all the static sprites Scott Costin used in this game. So I scaled it down to give it an 8-bit effect, and it works surprisingly well. Yes! Uh, yes! To recreate the uncanny glitchiness of the main menu, I simply inverted my Freddy sprite and made him turn upside down for some reason. But hey, it works. And just like that, all right, I'm done. Guys, 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 I'm done. So I exported my project, made niche.io page, did one final playtest, and asked my friend to playtest it is what I sought while working on this game. But after spending three weeks just looking through all the footage I recorded, yes, I'm a psychopath, I realized that this silly FNAF remake needed to be the best it could be. And the only way to do that is to do what I did for my previous game, make it mobile. Editing Juju here. I just wanna say that this game has no ads, no in-app purchases, and I do not profit off the game directly in any way. And if Scott Costin or anyone in the FNAF team wants me to take the game down, I will. So yeah. Back to the video. Now, as I mentioned before, what's neat about Five Nights at Freddy's is that its gameplay is similar to a PowerPoint. You just click a bunch of buttons, which actually plays to our advantage as Godot automatically makes these buttons compatible for mobile. The only thing we need to convert is the movement. And after looking at a few arrangements, I decided to go for this double button design where the player presses these buttons to move. I also re-added my spring trap sprite as a totally creepy Easter egg in the game. Totally creepy. And after a few more bug fixes, balancing changes, and some promotional art, along with the sick recreation of the trailer. My game is ready for mobile. So let's export it and I have FNAF2D.apk here. It is on my phone. I'm gonna install the app. Ooh. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. <laughs> and it begins. What happened was that my game successfully built on my phone as an APK file, but not as an AAB file, which is required for the Google Play Store. I don't know how long this is gonna take for me to debug. I'ma say four hours.
it did not take four hours. It is currently December 14th. I started building my game on December 6th. This is the face of a man who has lost all his sanity. And in case you wonder why it took so long, I had the wrong version of Java installed, which I can only find by typing in a specific command for the command prompt, which I can only find after searching through all these forums. So I downloaded the most recent Java version without knowing it doesn't support Gradle, which actually builds the mobile game, which I can only find after looking through all these tabs. So I got the right version of Java and Gradle, only to realize that I hadn't properly uninstalled my other version of Java, which Godot was recognizing to be the right version of Java that didn't have Gradle, which I only found out after looking through all these Tabs! And this is the face of a man whose pain lasts no longer. Who just spent three months of his life making a silly FNAF game because of one $2 comment. So let's play it. Ooh, FNAF <laughs> Oh, no, 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 I took the wrong... Yo! Oh my god! This is so cool! This is literally just Five Nine oh, Freddy's! I think the pixel art. Dude, this is sick! The camera guy thing is so good! Where are they? Where are they? Oh, he's back there! Wait, 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 the purple guy! Uh oh! I think that sounds bad! Oh, it's close! Right work, right work! What? Um, they're coming! Wait, where the fuck did Freddy go? Oh, wait, why didn't they close the door? Oh no! This is getting scary! <gasps> Stop! Is that a gun? <laughs> I love the sound effects. I actually love yeah, the sound effects. <laughs> 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 oh this is awesome. Foxy? Oh, <laughs> That was fun though. That was cool. <laughs> I messed up. I hit the wrong button. <laughs> the first FNAF game that I played. The game is awesome. Dog pack. Game plan just came. <laughs> 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 the game was fire. It was actually amazing. Am I having nightmares? Please make a second one. Yes, yes, let's go! Let's go! Oh my gosh. Three months of my life, huh? Thanks for everything. <laughs>